We're glad to know that you're still there and uh, watching the run-up. And we're looking at now, right now, we're looking at uh, what has, has been happening between the presidency and mostly APC governors who are challenging uh, the president for a broadcast that he made extending the life of a particular note that was... Uh, uh, supposedly no longer supposed to be uh, legal tender. That's the 200 Naira note. Instead of uh, saying that all the old notes should come back into circulation. And they're basing, uh, the people who are quarreling with the, with the president are basing their argument on what the Supreme Court said, the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, that there was a temporary injunction on uh, the stoppage of the usage of the 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes. So now we are being joined by Barrister Abumere uh, Osara, who is talking to us from the UK. He's a legal practitioner, and he's going to unravel some of these things to us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Barrister Osara. Good morning, my good friend. My pleasure. Let us just start by asking you, when you talk about a, a temporary injunction, how long is it supposed to last? Because the governors are all saying that the Supreme Court has made a pronouncement, and because of that pronouncement, the president has no right to even say what he said. How long should an or does an injunction of that nature even last? Because I hear it has a lifespan. Yes, uh, uh, that's true. That ordinarily, as the name... Uh, uh, I suggest, I suppose it's, uh, it's an interim measure that's not supposed to last for eternity. Certainly it has a lifespan. If you look at the various rules of uh, courts all over the country, federal high court rules, the state high court uh, rules, it's uh, supposed to last for at least uh, for seven days, subject to renewal. Mm. But in this instance, in this instance uh, case uh, of uh, Kaduna states against the AG uh, Federation, uh, I, I think what the Supreme Court did was to make the order to last the, the determination of the motion on notice. So what that means is that the interim order will continue to be in force until the hearing at the termination of the motion on notice filed by the uh, uh, respective uh, state government mm. against uh, the AG Federation and the two states of uh, Doha and Bayesa who joined as uh, co-defendants. Yes, an interim, interim order as the name is yes, supposed to be for a temporary period, but since there's an order and, uh, of the Supreme Court stating that it should last until the hearing and termination of the motion of notice, then that should be it. And uh, I also want us to bear in mind that the, the usual practice, and it has been uh, laid down by several cases of the Supreme Court, right from the uh, period of uh, Vaswani and Savala, Governor of Lagos State and uh, uh, Uduku and the First Atlantic uh, Bank, that where there is a matter in court, in respect of which an injunction is sought, once the respondent or the defendant has notice of that application, irrespective of whether the court has made a formal order restricting or restraining you from taking further steps, you are bound to seize action and wait until that application or notice is heard or determined. So that's the position of the law that I know it. Mm. That's uh, interesting. But, but the argument was that when, when the rule, I don't know how to put it, I'm not a lawyer, but the yeah. reason why the... Um, the interim injunction is the way it is, is so that the complainant may not use that because you could just go get an injunction and then whatever you want 
the case to be like for you. You, you. you delay the case until the time that you want it to last. For instance, in this particular case, let's say, for instance, I'm, not, I'm just saying it, let's say mm -hmm. it is because of the election and to curb vote buying that uh, this um, Naira redesign was made. And 25th of February is the day of the election. And then someone goes to the court and just says, and just gets an injunction and has that injunction extended until the time that the election has passed. He has achieved his aim without the courts even hearing this matter. So how does that help in making the process transparent? How does that help in making sure that both parties are, are satisfied, sort of, or they are met halfway? If you say placing an injunction can make the case or the, the, the order stay until this case is heard. We are waiting for the case to be heard on, in, on Wednesday, for instance. And yes. federal government felt that it was too, too long. Maybe that's what they felt. So how does it help to make the people um, feel that justice is being done or that both of them are considered in whatever case that is brought before the court? Yes. And I think that's, the, it, that's a very good uh, question. That's why it has long been established. Courts are very careful and very wary as not to allow itself to be used as a vehicle by the other side to achieve their nefarious objective. So that's why when matters are brought before a court and injunctions are sought, because you find situations where parties, they try to contrive an emergency situation so that they can use the court as a vehicle to achieve the objective. So, the courts have to be extremely careful and very vigilant so that it does not lend itself as an instrument of oppression. So, now, personally, what I expected the Supreme Court to have done, as far as I'm concerned, my own take, is that this matter should have been struck out the first day it came up. The first day it came up, the Supreme Court on its own should have posed the question to counsel for Kaduna State to say, look, can you address me on the question of whether this is a matter in respect of which our jurisdiction can be invoked in its original jurisdiction? My take, I've had, I've had experience before the Supreme Court where the justices themselves raise the question. The decision is fundamental. The matters in respect of which the Supreme Court's original decision can be invoked are clearly spelled out under the provision of Section 2, 3, 2 of the Constitution. Very limited. It's not an all commerce affair. So, and the Supreme Court are very jealous, very careful in interpreting its original jurisdictional role. What I expected the Supreme Court to have done, taking into account the sensitive nature of this matter and the overall effect it was going to have with respect to the upcoming elections and the rest, the question should have been put to my letter, to my very good friend, A.U. Mustafa, SN. Show us where the law gives us the power to look into this matter in our original jurisdiction. I still expect that on the next date, the Supreme Court will drop that question. But I, I, I gather that the federal government has filed an objection challenging the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And I presume uh, those states and Bayesa states will do likewise. What I also expect the Attorney General of the Federation to have done uh, before now is to also have filed an application before the Supreme Court seeking to set aside the charge or vacate the interim order. Just as you pointed out, it will appear as if that the purpose of this case is designed to achieve a particular aim, which is to frustrate the implementation of the policy design policy of the government. 
drag the case on for a while and ensure that the policy does not work until after the election. So the court has to be careful that it does not lend itself to be used unwittingly if that is the plan of yeah. the Kaduna State Government, Kogi State Government, and Zafara State Government. Because I've also heard it said that people are beginning to be asking themselves some of these questions. Has uh, Erufai, who is a serial breach of order of uh, courts, has Erufai has not shown himself over the years as someone who respects orders of courts. The ditto for the Kogi State of Honor is not known to be someone enamored with propagating and seeking to defend the uh, rule of law. Not to talk of the governor of uh, Z Zamfara State, Matawale. So this sort of situation should put the blended justices on guard. So that as you as posed by your question, the court does not lend itself unwittingly to be used as a tool by some persons, some states, okay. to frustrate the implementation of the Naira design policy and achieve their goal. Okay, uh, Barisal, let me just give a room for my colleague to, she, he might have one question because we're running out of time, but he needs to just uh, throw in something there, a bio, please. Let him take it briefly. Yeah, Barista Osari, it's always, always a pleasure to, to listen to you. Well, thank you um, very much. I'm, I'm just situating all of this within the context of the broadcast made by His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State. Mm. I don't know, because you are out of the country at the moment, I don't know if you had the opportunity of hearing or seeing that broadcast. Um, and that has generated a lot of uh, comments. You know, he was basically saying people should continue spending the money. And recently was even in the media that he's now asked his um, assistants to go around collecting monies and things like that. But how, how do you situate that broadcast within the context of all of this, especially the, 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 the uh, interim order given by the Supreme Court, you know, and whether the motive of that broadcast, you know, some people question the motive and those who supported him are saying, no, he was right. But what's, what's your perspective? Uh, yes. Uh, first, I, I like to say uh, I'm in Lagos, I'm in Victoria okay. Island. I'm in Tokyo, Victoria okay. Island. I'm not part of the country. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, the stance taken by Erufan, the governor, a recipe for anarchy. And uh, they, they acted beyond a remit. Clearly, the brokers they made, to, in my view, clearly unconstitutional. Uh, the uh, uh, design is not carefully uh, taken, it's not carefully handled, uh, can lead to a constant crisis in the country, which we don't need at this moment. Because the, 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 the reason tying it to enforcing order of court is by itself lawless. They are in court, and if you feel that an order of court made in your favor is being violated by the other side, there's a, a civilized way, a procedure that are enjoying our rules of court to resort to, which is you instruct your lawyers to file necessary applications before the court. And I'm happy, as, I, as I've learned, that the solicitors to Kogi, Kaduna, and Zamfara states, they have filed an application before the Supreme Court seeking to set aside the, the broadcast or the speech or the directive of the president. That is the legal way to go. You don't confront the federal government. Taking into account the fact that 
the constitution has clearly spread out the roles and duties of the state mm -hmm. and the federal government with respect to issue of currency. Yeah. Now, item 15 of the exclusive, under the exclusive list, clearly place the issue of currency, legal tender, under the purview of the federal government exclusively. Now, to enable the federal government to carry out activity, the National Assembly promulgated a law, the Central Bank Act of 2007. And by Section 17 of that Act, the Central Bank of Nigeria was vested by law with its exclusive powers to do what they have done. So this action, the action of these states is a call for rebellion. And all where many Nigerians to resist and have a caution this governance to beat a nasty retreat. <clears throat> the civilized way prescribed under our laws by which if they are dissatisfied to ventilate their claim is to go to court. Either the high court, the criminal nature of the claim, or the Supreme Court. Okay. Okay, very for that matter. Yes. But it is not to challenge frontally. And I must commend, I must commend, uh, just give me a moment to say this. I have to commend the matured way in which our dear president has handled the matter. Mm. Because if the president had taken it up on them, would have would have had a personal crisis okay. on our hands, which we don't need. Okay, this, uh, okay, Barista, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I wish we had more time, but. Um, we have more time before the election, so we might just call on you again before Saturday. Uh, we don't know. But thank you for your perspective, for giving us insight into this matter. We always uh, feel very happy when you come on the show. So thank you for being a part of this show today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. We're ready to assist in deepening the frontiers of our democracy and enlightening the general public thank you. on the Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we've, been talking, we've been talking with Barrister Bumere Osara, a, a legal practitioner, notary public. We're, and when we return, we wrap up on the run-up for today. Stay with us.